Hey YouTubers, let's talk about Skyrim. Let's talk about these DLL plugins that many of you are still waiting on and let's talk about what you can or should do while we continue the wait. And do note that this is going to be for the Steam version of Skyrim since we now have Skyrim for so many different things and it recently released as well on GOG. So that is another PC version which actually is going to require different plugins and SKE so we're just going to avoid that for now. But there is a lot of information out there if you do have an issue with the GOG version of Skyrim but again this is for steam so let's go but before that two things one if you love mmos rpgs and other gaming mods updates and news be sure to check out the channel like the video and always always love to see new subs and second thing remember that these mod creators are people who love to create content and tools for the games that we love they then share these with hundreds of thousands if not millions of other gamers some mods are fun easy retextures of weapons other mod creators go into the game files and better understand the systems and engine and with that create a mod that ends up becoming a foundation for many other mod creators if it wasn't for these dependency types of mods like address libraries race menu various animation replacers mods from people like the power of three we wouldn't have a lot of the mods that we love to use in all of our playthroughs so be patient let these people get to these updates when they can all mods that are fundamental dependencies of a lot of the more popular mods are either going to be updated by the creator here soon or by the person that's currently maintaining the mod so without further ado let's see what we can do but you sit down thinking everything's been updated after the two updates that they snuck in at the end of september you waited for skse you waited for address libraries a few other crucial mods that you had in your load order you launched skyrim using ske and you get this warning from SKSE informing you that DLL plugins from several mods have failed to load and they are now being disabled. In many cases, trying to load these save files while the DLL plugins are disabled can and will corrupt your playthrough, just like if you would uninstall a heavily scripted mod mid-playthrough. It's something that you don't want to do because theoretically what it's going to be doing is it's going to be removing the mod from your play order once you load up the game and then make a save, that change then is going to be saved in there and you're going to end up running into issues. So you're going to want to take a look at this list. Thankfully, SKSC lets us know which DLL plugins are not loading and are going to be disabled. Head over to Nexus. Go ahead and check on these mods. Some mods are not yet updated on Nexus, but they are updated on other sites, sometimes even on the mod creator's personal Discord. For instance, Race Menu is still in, I guess, a beta, and it's not yet on Nexus. But by checking the mods page on Nexus, you'll see that they have it posted for free on their Patreon. I'll put the link in the description as well as pin it at the top of the comments, and I'll do the same for any other mods that I notice the same trend with. And now on to our two options. The first one is you can downgrade back to a previous version of Skyrim. Rim. A lot of times people have Skyrim set to not update and due to this they're currently stuck on the previous version before the September updates which was version 1.5.97. This was when all the mods, the DLL plugins, SKSC all worked fine. Now what they're going to do is they're going to sit playing their version uninterrupted until everything gets safely updated. They know then that they can update to the next version of Skyrim which are all currently on now and they don't have to worry about any of their saves getting corrupted or running into scripting problems in the future. So the first option, which I'll get to here in a moment, is downgrading back to the previous version. Other option is if you've already updated, just stay updated. There is a way to put your playthrough right now on, let's call it, put it on ice, save it into a profile in your mod manager and move on to another save, start something fresh, play around, have some fun, maybe even try some new mods. And then once everything gets updated, you can revert back to your old saves and everything should be good to go. So first rolling back, if this is what you are wanting to do, then you need to be aware that you should not have updated or installed any new mods or versions of mods since the updates back in September. If you have already started updating, then you need to make sure that you can go back and find the version of the mod that was for the previous version, 1.5.97. And if you've already started updating and you've updated quite a few of them, I actually suggest just skipping trying to downgrade. It's gonna be a huge hassle if you know what you're doing go for it but if you are set on downgrading you need to understand that downgrading means that you need to pay close attention to the game version that you're using as well as the SKE version that you're using from now and going forward anytime you download or change any mods in your load order but what you do need to know is that you're going to be playing on version 1.5.97 on PC and you'll be using SKSE 2.0.20 and to downgrade it is super simple 
jump over to Nexus Mods, search for Unofficial Skyrim Special Edition Downgrade Patch, and as always, read the entire mod page, read the instructions, read how to install it right there. If you have any questions, check over on the forums there. It's all going to be answered and taken care of. Millions of people have used this, and you will be set back to, as I said, 1.5.97, and then you'll need to go and get SKSE version 2.0.20, which is still active right there on their page. I'll go ahead and link that as well. And in the future, if you run into the same thing, I do want to let you know that you can actually find older versions of any game that's been put on Steam on SteamDB. Steam and other game hosting platforms save all versions of a game that is sold and launched on their launcher. I'll go ahead and put this as well down in the description. I'll go ahead and put it right here on the screen. What this is going to do is it's going to take you in and it's going to allow you to find the previous versions of the game. And once you find that version, you would go to the manifests and you would look for the version that you're looking for and once you find that you would go down the list and you would locate the disk and the core files the one here at 6.3 gigs the other at 7.96 you would download those and then you would replace those with the ones that are currently in your updated skyrim again you don't need to do this because the downloader patch is out there and now as long as all the mods are set for this previous version of skyrim 1.5.97 and you have 2.0.20 skse installed you should be good to go now the second thing you can do and what i would suggest doing is if you've already updated, just stay updated. I know not everyone wants to wait and they want to resume their previous games as soon as possible, but there are options. In the long run, updating or staying update to the most current version stops you from needing to always look for mods and make sure you have the right version of this and that and this one works for that. You get to avoid this whole thing. And we're gonna do this by creating profiles inside of our mod manager we're going to save and put our current playthrough on ice and we're going to start a new fresh playthrough leaving all the mods that we currently have installed installed as they are and then once everything needed for our main playthrough gets updated we can jump right back over to it it's safe it hasn't been corrupted and everything's good to go you may have to update a few mods here and there but for the most part everything's gonna be good you can get updated and you can jump right back into your old game and to do this i'm going to show it with vortex when you open up vortex look up to the top left and select the game we want i want skyrim so i'll switch over to it and right here we will see your profiles as well as any other profiles you have created at the bottom of each profile, you will see a little option, one saying edit. This means that this is your current active profile. The other profiles, if you have any, will have the same button, but it'll say enable. Clicking that allows you to switch over and enable a new profile. So let's now create a new profile and I'll name this one, let's say fresh game while we wait. And then come down here and select to create a separate save file for this profile. You can also choose to have settings that are independent for the rest of the game if you want to do that or leave a description. Once we have this set though, go ahead and click save and we've now created ourselves a new profile. The original file over here, which I have labeled as my main, is my current Skyrim playthrough. This is the one that has mods and DLLs that are being disabled because they're not updated. Knowing that if I try to load my game, I'm probably gonna corrupt it and I might lose it. Now what creating a new profile is going to do is it's going to allow me to keep all of my mods installed exactly how they are right now. And when I switch profiles, I'll be able to have the ability to enable individual mods that are separate from my actual playthrough. Going into my current playthrough, you see everything is enabled and active. So now I'm going to put this whole game on ice, as I said, and keep it safe until I'm ready to get it updated. And we see here, when I go into the new profile that we just created, it has all the same mods installed, but they are all set as disabled. Now I can go through my list, pick and choose which mods I want to enable for this new playthrough, and I have no fear in causing any harm to my original main save file. In fact, because we selected create separate save file for the new profile, when we load Skyrim, it's so fresh that it doesn't have any saves currently available. Skyrim will now only load the save files for the profile I currently have enabled in Vortex. To go back to my old files, all I have to do is go to Vortex, switch back to my main profile, load up Skyrim, and all my saves will be there waiting for me. And that's it. You can go ahead and play. You can update your mods to this new current version of Skyrim. And then once everything is good and stable, you can go back 
get all those DLL plugins and mods that you need for your original save, get everything updated, and you don't have to worry about any harm coming to your saves. In fact, you won't even see those saves again until you switch back over to that profile. So hopefully this helps out again. I'm going to have a bunch of links down in the description as well as the pinned comment on top. And as always, I will see you guys again in the next video. Take care.